Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, very interesting conversation we just had with uh, Willa Honleji there. I always, I always, always uh, love his analysis on some of these stories. And I particularly like his whitish beard. <laughs> anyway, that's not what we're talking about now. We're talking about um, today, today in history. In history. Yes, and uh, I'm starting off with, you know, telling what happened today in 1998. It was a period when Nigeria was moving from, uh, you know, while well, still recovering from what had happened in the past five years in the uh, Sanya Bacha government. Of course, uh, General uh, Abdul Salami Abubakar was uh, in power at that time, uh, preparing to hand over to a, democrati a democratically elected president in 1999. And this day was one of those days when the Nigerian government uncovered a two billion naira fraud that was carried out. Actually, I think it's um, dollars. Two billion dollars. Dollars. I Lord have mercy. $2 billion fraud <laughs> that was carried out, you know, by um, a family or one of the family members of the Abacha family and his uh, um, associates also. Um, the This revelation basically was uncovered and uh, was linked to deals that were sought and frauds that were carried out with the Ajaokota steel complex. And so this conversation really cannot go on without talking about the biggest white elephant project that has happened in Nigeria's history. It's been almost 50 years of the Ajaokota steel complex um, since it started in 1979 and still has not been finished. It was at 98% completion in uh, 1994, I believe. Okay. And talking today, about Ajakuta still. But the, the intriguing part of all of this for me is the fact that the these men were not named. Yes, I saw that also. And the, I've been looking and looking to see they were, they were not named. named. Over the years, they even the, there's an agreement that the com the family will be paying back, you know, some of these money. It just seems like it's a bottomless pit. How did these people do this for how many years? Um, for five years, it was about about, about five years, ninety three to ninety eight. It, it's it's really it's really um, one of the most mind blowing things about uh, the corruption in Nigeria. How it is possible that we can talk about these things in the paper without anybody going to jail or without anybody being named? Uh, Two billion dollars, as of nineteen ninety eight, um, was a lot of money, um, and I'm, I'm I'm also going to you know I always like to talk about how over time we've we've seen the. Uh, Majakota Steel Complex as a bottomless pit of corruption. It has, over time, continued to receive allocation, continued to receive money, um, uh, funds voted for its completion, but never got anywhere simply because of lack of political will. Um, it, um, it, it is one of the biggest, it's, it's probably the biggest um, um, contract in Nigeria's history uh, because of its mere size. It's about 24,000 uh, um, square feet, I believe. Yeah, I, I remember um, when, when, when I was, I actually said, in Kogi State, uh, that's the National Youth Service. And when I take that part, going to Oweri to see my folks, I feel, you know, intimidated by the mass, size. the size of that um, entire structure. I, and I didn't go in, I was just passing on the road. So, you know, it gives you an idea what could have, how that could have been, you know, exploited for personal gains by those who uh, were the handlers. Let's talk a little more about um, the background around the General Sani Abacha. Yes. Uh, we, we said uh, humorously, um, humorously earlier that uh, he was he's seen as the ancestor who sends money to us, you know, give us an alert from time to time uh, <laughs> from the land of uh, the dead. Now, there's been recovery after recovery uh, since uh, Batcher's uh, demise. Uh, the most recent, shockingly, uh, was in this 2022. Um, we got uh, monies from the United Kingdom. That's about three hundred and eight million dollars that was recovered uh, from uh, the Abacha loot. Uh, we also know that uh, in during the time of. Um, the former president, Goodluck Jonathan, uh, monies were also recovered. Uh, the only time that money was not recovered uh, from the Abacha loot was uh, the short term of Yeradua. Yeradua he, yes. he passed on. At Maybe the, because of the time that he spent, because Goodluck uh, Jonathan's government still, you know, got to recover some money. So. If Yaradot maybe had you know stayed a little longer, he would have recorded some recoveries from the Abacha loot also. 
um, it's pretty unfortunate. The two um, cabinet, former cabinet ministers and a family member of the um, a dictator uh, defrauded Nigeria on this day. That was the news that we got. So we needed to uh, talk about it and to uh, see what we can learn. Now, the company in question is uh, from Russia. The, the controversy, like we said, is yes. about uh, the Adjokuta steel. Uh, the company purchased about $2.5 billion uh, debt um, in owed to the Russia by Nigeria at a heavy discount, paying about $500,000. Uh, the company was then uh, resold, rather, resold That's the amazing. debt to Nigeria at its face value, pocketing that amount that we talked about. Uh, the then as Chief Press Secretary to uh, General Abdulami, Abdul Salami Abubakar, uh, that's uh, Mohammed Haruna, uh, said the announcement of the alleged um, fraud come, came rather at that time, two weeks after officials announced that the Abata family had repaid the government more than $750 million in illegally amassed wealth. That's uh, about uh, what we have for you um, on this day. Um, Lucia Guabas and you also recovered loot from the Who didn't? Maybe if you were president at some point, I'm sure you would, I would have. recover. When, um, How much did he really steal? Nobody knows. You know, there's Nobody estimations, can ever you know, tell. $3 Probably billion, dollars, $4 billion. There's, there's just numerous estimates here and there. Yeah, you know, uh, there's also conversation down. about the utilization of the recovered uh, yes. loot. Um, we know that the National Assembly at some point raised dust about the social in investment uh, programs that the um, government of Buhari was planning to invest in. They said they can't do that without going through the National Assembly. We know that, I mean, that would be another avenue to take the money uh, into uh, private pockets. That's what happened on this day. Um, Two billion dollar fraud was uncovered. So uh, let's talk about the artificial heart thing. Mm -hmm. Today, we got the first artificial heart implanted um, in Barney Clark. He became the first human to have a permanent artificial heart. Uh, we know that there's been this device uh, over the years that's uh, been, you know, scientists try to make life for people that have heart condition yes. a bit easier pending when they get um, the, the heart the transplant heart, yeah. from a live human being. So let's talk a bit. The device... This was in 1982, by the way. The device was then known as Javik Servan. Um, in an interview before the implantation of the pump, uh, Clark, who was um, the, you know, had a very debilitating, uh, debilitating health condition, uh, expressed his desire basically to advance science. That was why he chose to be a uh, part of it. He survived for 112 days after becoming uh, the the world's first recipient of a permanent uh, heart. heart. Um, he, he was 61 years old at the time. He had spent uh, four years, uh, four months rather, of his life in a hospital bed in Uttar. Now, a bit of a background here. Uh, doctors previously had determined that uh, he was too sick to be eligible for a heart uh, transplant, um, leaving uh, artificial heart as his only option. Uh, his predicament coincided with the America's uh, Food and Drug um, Administration app approving a new artificial heart uh, for human implantation. Uh, the device I mentioned earlier is Javik 7. It was named after one of its key developers who had been building and refining artificial hearts since his student days at the University of Utah. Um, uh, criticism was quick. Um, the media we trust us. We got wind. They were trying to keep it under wraps so they can yes. tell the world the big news subsequently. But somehow the media found out. Um, and then there was a renewed debate about the ethics of using artificial organs in hopeless situations. Uh, they also talked about the ethics of uh, the new field. Uh, some people say uh, at that time that the heart, the artificial heart, was not ready for human um, implantation. But as we know, um, it has evolved over the years. Uh, at 
Today, we have about 13 artificial hat designs, but only one has received uh, commercial approval from the FDA. And we also know that uh, we've had people uh, from 9 to 80 years becoming recipient of the um, artificial. artificial heart. And there is a survival rate after, oh yes, after um, Clark survived for 112 days, we had another person, um, an Indiana man named Bill Shoreda. He lived for 620 days um, after that. Um, unlike Clark, he was able to receive More phone calls, go out, you know, on a parade and, you know, live a, a reason, reasonably productive yeah. life uh, before uh, he died. So this, this story really is, um, you know, aside the fact that we're uh, talking about why today is relevant in uh, medical history, it's also a day to celebrate those people who have uh, spent years and years and sacrificed even their lives um, for medical research. You know, the doctors, the scientists, the researchers, the people themselves who have also uh, sacrificed their own lives to improve medical research. We're talking about 1953 here, uh, which was uh, one of the very first times that they tried an artificial heart to lung uh, uh, pump. Um, that obviously wasn't successful. But over years, they continued to modify it. His name was uh, Robert J. Javik, and that's uh, where the Javik 7 um, heart, uh, artificial heart's uh, name comes from. Um, those are the people who have sacrificed and done so much, you know, to, um, uh, to medicine and to help to improve on where we are today. The reason we can have lung transplant, we can have, uh, uh, you know, heart transplant, even here in Nigeria, there's uh, transplanting going on, is because of the sacrifices that these people have made uh, to humanity and to medical research. So we celebrate all of them, the doctors, the researchers, the scientists, the laboratory technicians, laboratory scientists, and the people themselves who have given up body parts uh, to um, medical research and to improve medical yes, research. Yes, if, if we have that, I, I don't mind. If I'm healthy and something happens to me, please share the body part. What body so part do you think please. you know is, you have that is most healthy that you could donate to research? Uh, most of my body parts are very healthy. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, I, you know, one of the things that you mentioned, you know, is that, um, what the media, you know, that was attacking the idea of uh, placing an artificial um, item in the body back then. Um, and of course, you also mentioned it was only, the, the debate was really about, you know, when it was really necessary that we might go that far. These days, we have people doing it not even for medical reasons, but because of uh, beauty and to look, to look better. So times have really, really changed uh, from where we were in the 50s to where we are uh, today. The good and, life is something everybody wants. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. And if but you can I mean, it, like you, yes. you said it all, nothing to add to the fact that it is commendable how science has grown and improved the quality of our lives, and they continue to be researched today. In March 2020, uh, we understand that um, a French uh, biotech company announced that a patient had survived an artificial heart for two years and still counting, you know, waiting for a heart, a normal heart transplant yes. to occur. And they are hoping that in time, uh, they'll be able to, um, you know, create a, that yeah, so that people can live. Again, religious people will say that man is trying to be God. Yes. The, the, flip the, it, the, God said, I created you in my own image and likeness. The, the very first... <laughs> unsuccessful uh, transplanting or heart transplanting, the patient only um, survived for three days. Now we are talking about people who can survive, you know, maybe for a whole years. lifetime and, you know, a couple of years, um, either while waiting for um, an actual um, a donor or, you know, just living with the machine for as long as possible. Um, so we appreciate, once again, science, appreciate researchers, appreciate doctors and, and everyone who has played, you know, their parts to improving on our quality of life and improving on life expectancy for humans. Um, yeah, but I think it's uh, important to reiterate that no artificial heart has proved effective as a permanent replacement yes. for that which God has given. But we are hoping that, you know, loved ones will not lose people too early, especially when the people are really young. I think this is a good thing uh, to help them stay with us. Can you be heartbroken life. with an artificial heart? Hmm? Can you be heartbroken with an artificial heart? <laughs> I was like, it again, of course, just you ask me sometimes, how can I, how would I know? I have a normal <laughs> heart, please. I mean, if you have an artificial heart, can you still feel heartbroken? You know, uh, yes, of course, you're human, you. it doesn't stop, 
It, okay, so the function, um, I was reading a bit around this and I, the myth around the heart. Today we talk about the heart basically for everything because it is the most complicated vessel in the body. It pumps blood to all, it's working 24 yes. seven, even when you're sleeping. So there is a mythical um, aura around the heart. You feel with the heart, you cry with the heart, you express your thoughts, you keep things in the heart. So yes. Um, so yes, I don't care how, um, how, what kind of heart you have. If it is artificial, uh, you're surviving by some, um, well, with the help of some machine, you have a heart. You're human. You're breathing. Your brain is working. So, yeah. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.